Hey there, good people. It's the Big Heavy back with a quick update on my F-150 two-way radio setup. Now, if you haven't seen the previous video, I'll put the little magic linky up in there, but I haven't changed anything in terms of the antenna or power setup or where I've mounted the radios below the rear seat. All that has worked out great. I did, however, have a couple problems with that setup. The first was with the cup holder mount where I put the display for my Yaesu uh, two meter um, ham radio in that it had a couple problems. You know, first of all, despite this being a frankly massive vehicle, there's only two real cup holders up front that are reasonably accessible for the driver and passenger. There's two in the back on the armrest, but if you've got passengers back there, those are the most obvious ones for them to use. So you kind of only have two and you know, yes, there's little water bottle pockets and all sorts of other storage, but if you got a couple cups of coffee and you've lost a cup holder due to that radio display, that's kind of a problem. The other problem I had was I didn't really love the way I had the microphone set up for the radios, and I also couldn't really hear the radios. You know, they'd work great if you were sitting like I am now, kind of in a quiet driveway and didn't have the engine on, didn't have anyone with you. But as soon as you started the vehicle, you know, got up to speed or, you know, worst case scenario had a couple or three butts in the back seat, the sound got pretty muffled from the onboard radio speakers under that seat. So I've tried to address all those problems. So first off, I got a mount that replaces the little tray above the console. I frankly, in the you know six months or so before I put this in, never really found a use for that tray other than you know I'd throw something up there just for the novelty of it, but didn't actually find it all that useful. So giving that up wasn't a big deal. I'll put a link to the exact tray I use. There's a couple options um, down in the description. The main differentiator I saw between the two options was one required installing a metal plate underneath the mounting hardware. You got a lot more industrial grade kind of sturdy mount that you could hang like a tablet or something a little heavier on. In my case, I went with the less robust but easier to install option since as you'll see, I've got the display for the ASU radio kind of supported by the dash. The one little trick I did do there was I put a piece of wire wrap tape, which is essentially kind of a felt tape. It's, you know, felt on one side and an adhesive on the other side underneath that display in the hopes that it won't totally jack up the dashboard should I ever remove it. We'll see how that works. I'm sure it's going to get a little bit scuffed up, but that should be better than plastic on plastic. And there's a variety of accessories that are available with this mount. I got a couple of the ball mounts from the company. They had like a little package deal. And what I didn't realize at the time was they're not a standard size. They're a bit of an oddball size. And frankly, I would recommend skipping the mounts from those companies, except for one specific situation that I'll mention, and just get regular RAM ball mounts. You know, RAM's kind of the industry standard for this ball mount type stuff. I ended up just buying one RAM ball and a little RAM extension and a couple adapters. And again, I'll put this whole shopping list down stairs that ultimately let me mount my Yesu display up there. The one specific case where you might want uh, this company, and I keep saying this company because frankly, I can't remember their name. I think it's Bulletproof Diesel or Bullet Point Mounting Solutions. For some reason, all this truck stuff has a bullet connotation, but they do have a really nice little mount that has a standard radio microphone adapter on the back. So you can hang your radio mic on there. I got one of them to try it out. I really like it, and I'm generally only using one radio at a time, so I'll have one handset up mounted on there. If I do end up in a scenario where I'm using two radios more frequently, I have a ball already set up on there so I can put another one of those radio mounts on there. I think the only problem I'll have is the cord will block a little bit of the display screen. Now, it was surprisingly straightforward to get that display mounted and wired up there. Basically, as you're installing the mount, you get access to the space behind the dash where the display screen is located. And there's probably an advanced way to do this, but I basically took a coat hanger, straightened it out. I wrapped a little electrical tape around the end just so I didn't you know, jam that into anything important and just very carefully and very, very slowly kind of probed my way down there. You know, I'd sort of go down until I felt a little resistance, give it a little jiggle and see if I get a little further and ultimately was able to get that coat hanger down to where the driver's footwell is. And that allowed me to run a cable down there. I was able to put that behind the trim and essentially get it to the back of the elbow uh, console and run it under the mats into the back seat. So that's how I ultimately got my display hooked up. I did need to get an extension cable for the display. I needed an extension cable for both the mics. So ended up needing three extension cables, but that ultimately got me hooked up with a pretty nice and pretty effective setup for mounting the display. That's been working really well. The one problem that I haven't fully solved is audio. So what I've learned, and you know, maybe this would be obvious if you were more of an audio savvy person, these two-way radios send out an amplified signal to a speaker. 
and they use a little, you know, what looks like a standard headphone jack, but whereas your headphones send a pretty lightly amplified signal, you know, these send something a little more robust so they can drive a speaker. My initial thinking was I'd put one speaker up in the front console. I'd, you know, use a little mixer so I could send the output from each of those radios to one speaker. I tried that and, you know, the audio engineers in the world are laughing when I say I didn't get any output. That's because essentially the signal was going from one radio into another and I could have broken some of the internal circuitry and the amplifiers of the radios. So luckily I shut that down pretty quickly. Basically, my solutions are either to create some sort of convoluted circuit and design something because I haven't been able to find anything off the shelf that allows me to connect my two radios to one speaker, or my other option is to run two speakers in the front. So right now I have the official Yesu speaker connected to my uh, two meter and 70 centimeter ham radio. I've got that stashed up in this little foot uh, console area, which is again, something I didn't find any particular use for. So I keep my handheld mics for the radios as well as that Yesu speaker up there. It's a circular design once you remove all the mounts. So it just kind of jams in there and hasn't moved around or anything. So I found that to be pretty effective, but I don't have a speaker for my GMRS radio. I got the Midland speaker in the hopes that that would be loud enough that it would work under the seat. And it's good up until, you know, 40 miles an hour or up until you got, you know, three butts back there that end up muffling the speaker. So my major issues I have left to solve are getting louder audio for that GMRS radio. You know, I've run through three or four different iterations and plans and haven't quite found something that works. And then also I'd like to do something a little more constructive with the handheld mics, cables. You know, I've got them jammed in that little foot area. Works great for storage, but when I go to use one of them, you kind of end up untangling a bunch of cables and it's just a little janky. So my current thinking is maybe I can 3D print some little cable guides that kind of latch on to that side console and route the mic cables a little more effectively, or maybe I can come up with a better storage solution for those than I currently have. But at the current point, I'm super happy with the mounting solution for the display for this Yesu radio. I also like that that Midland GMRS radio has its own display essentially built into the handheld mic. So if I am running two radios, I can see both their displays without having two giant things hanging around the dash. Really like this mounting solution, so I would highly recommend that if you're kind of looking for a similar type of setup in your F-150. And ultimately, if you only go with one radio, it should be quite effective and you won't have all those speaker worries. But once I do figure out that, I will post a quick V3. That is hopefully the ultimate version of two-way radio setups in the Ford F-150. So thanks for watching. Check out that other radio video if you haven't already. And if you wanna see any more F-150 electronic related type videos, throw something in the comments and I'll see what I can get you because that's kind of my area of expertise and enjoyment. And until then, hope all your trails are happy. And this is the Big Heavy wishing you well. Peace.